the older I get, the more I gradually ease into a sense of comfort and self-acceptance, despite my tendency towards perfectionism and self-criticism. Okay, so one thing I realized many years ago was that I had this problem in how I looked at myself, right? Often it was like I looked at myself as a garden full of weeds and I had to pull out the weeds. Or I, I would look at myself, I would say, like a diamond, but covered in rock, right? And I'd have to polish and scrape away and cut away all the rocks and get rid of all the imperfections to really release my inner shine, right? But here I realized I was using the wrong metaphors. And as I grew older, I started thinking about it differently. I started realizing that I was more like a flower or a tree and I had to gently water myself and provide myself with nourishment and with the tools and resources to help me find happiness and thrive in life. Now, really embodying that kind of mindset in real life was more difficult than you might think. It wasn't just a click with a switch and now I'm going to be more nice to myself. Now I'm going to be kinder to myself. No, there was a slow process in which I gradually started confronting a lot of things about myself, including my own unrelenting standards. I had grown to think of myself as a person that had to be amazing in every single regard. I had to have the highest grades in school. I had to publish the longest articles. I had to be a successful politician. I had to save the climate and the planet from climate change. I had to stop all wars. I had to, you know, do more constantly, do more, create more, say more, write more, and be more proactive. So I've always had this proactive mindset, which led me to be notoriously creative. I mean, I published thousands of videos on this YouTube channel alone, and that's not it. That's not all. I published thousands of blog posts. I've, you know, held a lot of different positions in political positions. I've had a full-time job and, you know, it's often felt as if I was a turtle carrying the entire world on my back, right? I was like that guy Prometheus pushing up a rock over the hill and I didn't really understand why. Now, there were many parts that helped me work through this kind of idea. I read The Way of Kings in Brandon Sanderson's works and I remember relating so much to Kaladin Stormblast as he was a slave during the wars in the book and he had to carry bridges, heavy bridges, together with his friends while archers would shoot them down because they were slaves, nobody cared about them. But he had to help everyone, he had to make sure that everyone would survive. And I related so much to this kind of mentality, I remember I scored as being his character on a personal test too, right? So I saw in this like how he was slowly breaking apart, trying to be perfect. I saw that, you know, he kept trying, but the only thing he could think about and remember were the people he failed, the people that died, the people that couldn't make it. He only blamed himself. He put all responsibility on himself, right? I have an internal locus of control, which means often if something goes wrong in the world, it's probably my fault. Not necessarily that aggressive, right? It's more a sense of like, I should have done something about it, right? Oh, I could have done something about it. What could I have done about it? If I was smarter, I'd figure it out, I'd say, you know. And I'd say, you know, but sadly, I'm not smart. I'm not smart enough. I'm stupid, you know. And I would say these things. And I would say these things to my friends. Now, thankfully, my friends, they would say, stop. Stop it, Eric. Don't talk to yourself that way. You need to be your own best ally. You need to stand up for yourself because nobody's going to stand up for you for you, right? You're going to have to be the one that looks out for you. You're going to have to think of and defend yourself when things happen, right? Now, this definitely helped me shift my perspective. But what also helped me shift things was recognizing that in carrying other people's burdens for them, I was taking away other people's responsibility. I was making people around me feel smaller, weaker, less important. Because, well, they'd say, Eric is so important. He does so much. He's so useful. He's so helpful. He's so great at everything. But I'm not that way. I suck. I, I, I remember that one of my closest friends, she admitted recently to carrying feelings of defectiveness, constantly feeling like she was smaller than, weaker than, lesser than me, in a sense. Constantly comparing herself to me, constantly jealous of me. She said, everything comes so easily to you. 
you're so good at everything. And I'm not. And that was confronting to me. And I was like, what can I do about that? Should I stop trying? Should I stop working hard? Should I stop doing things? Well, the honest answer was, yeah, I should. I definitely should. Now, getting there, I did a lot of kind of inner therapeutic work. I remember I wrote the book I called Small. And the art of being insignificant, in a sense. Like, let's go somewhere else. Now, the biggest shifts, I think, was when I left the computer age. Really exhausted by my job as a programmer, suddenly I realized I can't be inside anymore. COVID, everything, it just brought the walls on me to the point where I was like, you know, I want to spend at least four hours out every day. I want to, you know, be in the forest. I want to be in nature. I want to sit down, bring my tea with me, enjoy life. And I want to live in nature, more connected to nature, that it really brought my life on heel and it just did so much for my emotional health, my well-being. But that wasn't all. I realized that I was still overworked and I was still working way too much. So what I ended up doing then was I, I moved to Barcelona, Spain, and I hoped that the beach, the water, the mountains, it would revitalize my spirit and give me my energy and ability to play back. And in a manner of speaking, it did. But it took away my comfort. It took away my, the coziness that I longed for, the tranquility that I loved. In Barcelona, I could never rest. I could never feel peace. I could never hear the birds and just enjoy life. There was always somebody doing something somewhere nearby. Always the cars were honking at each other. Always there was something happening. And I found it stressful. And so last week I took the next step to downsizing and moved to Sweden. And here I've really found a comfortable oasis and a beautiful apartment together with a wonderful girlfriend, Nina. And yeah, I just love every minute of it. I love the cooking, I love the baking, I love the cleaning. And I love the small excursions daily to different quiet spots in Uppsala. And during my last week's vacation, I had a lot of time to think about my own standards. And one thing that I came to realize was that, you know, wherever I go, I will never be able to escape, you know, who I am. In a sense, I am a proactive person. Yes, I will always be working hard. I will always push myself. But I can try to make a conscious change in ensuring that the things that I create come out of a positive intention and that they are good for me as well as for everyone else. That they are honest, grounded and balanced. That I'm transparent about what I do and the effort it takes. And that I make an honest effort not just for other people but also for myself. That I start actually caring for myself. That I actually try to create something good for myself. That I actually try to enjoy life and everything that I do to the fullest. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.